Let us remember the objectives of this workshop. We want discussion between stakeholders to encourage and facilitate the understanding of intersex rights and needs, as well as the recognition of the violations of the rights of intersex people. Number two, we want to focus on opportunities for health policy and legislative change, as well as recommendations for future interventions. <coughs> Number three, we talked about commitment from government on the promotion and protection of the rights of intersex people, in particular legislative and policy changes on medical practices. Um, at the age of 22, um, it was discovered that I have an XY chromosome type, which is that of a male. I remember going for surgery, doctor asked me, can you please put your robe over your face? I'm 16, I was in grade 12 that year, so the doctor says put your robe over your face and that's what I did. After that, a few seconds, I heard camera sounds going off. I mean, at 16, for me, it's like, there's really something wrong with you, like, they're calling 10 people in the room, now they're taking pictures of your body. Um, you should never speak about this. There's people that will never come up because of the shame. And fortunately, there are people like myself, activists, people in ESA, Iranti, that are bringing light to this. And we've already accepted ourselves. We're waiting on South Africa to accept us. In September last year, at the 73rd session of the United Nations Committee of the Rights of the Child, the committee expressed its concern at the high prevalence of harmful practices in South Africa which include intersex genital mutilation. The committee urged South Africa to guarantee the bodily, bodily integrity, autonomous, autonomy and self-determination of all children, including intersex children, by avoiding unnecessary medical and surgi or surgical treatment during infancy and childhood. In our reply to the committee, the South African delegation acknowledged that we were aware of the need to stop the practice of intersex genital mutilation. In his address to the committee, Zane Dangor from the Department of Social Development said that as the government we do recognize that being intersex is a sexual characteristic and not a medical condition. But at the same time we recognize there are still practices where newborns and young children are having surgery performed on them which are harmful. What I realized growing up, especially recent now, is that with the medical practitioners, when you're born intersex, they say they want to fix you. And, and when you're born intersex, there's nothing wrong with you. From where it goes, there's nothing wrong with you. I'm not here to speak or comment on behalf of medical doctors, because I'm not permitted to do that. But I'm happy that being here today, I understand better about the intersex that the knowledge I had. In as much as I'm not speaking to our medical personnel, I wish to apologize because most of us, we have negative attitude towards the group, which is wrong. In other countries, what started happening is um, doctors and activists have started using the existing laws within their countries in order to try and um, to try and establish and proclaim the rights which intersex persons have. So, for example, one of the rights, one of the laws which I think could be used currently in order to protect, in, in protect intersex children is, for example, our sterilization laws. What you learn from literature to do with genital mutilation and surgeries which are taking place in respect of intersex children is a lot of these surgeries end up leading to sterilization of children. And currently, our laws on sterilization provide that in respect of a child who is under 12, you cannot do any surgery which is sterilization of that child unless there are serious health risks which are linked to the reason that you are deciding to sterilize a child. I would argue that that same law should be getting applied to intersex babies. Um, the main issue that has been coming up has, has been the issue of medical procedures on young children. And I think that's something that needs really legislative reform and not just engagement with the doctors. Uh, the other aspect then is also the training of doctors and ensuring that young doctors are aware of what being intersex is all about. There's different levels in, in, uh, in other countries. So Malta has passed legislation um, prohibiting unnecessary medical procedures. I'm told that Kenya 
uh, has been involved in the issue, but there's more work we need to do on the continent, and obviously our region is the region that we need to look to look at first. The idea is to get the African Commission to adopt some kind of, uh, uh, at least a resolution a statement to start with, so that it sets out very clearly that the rights of intersex persons are of concern, and that these are the basic minimum steps that all states in Africa should be taking.